Okay, welcome back to our second hour of, um, of class. Um, before we move forward, I think there's a question here and I'll just read out the question and uh, respond. So it says, say a spouse is alcoholic and therefore there are big financial problems. He doesn't accept his problem or want help, but it is destroying the family. Um, uh, he is not violent. How would you guide the counselee in setting goals? If the counselee says, I feel hopeless because I don't know how to get out of the situation, I'm stuck in. Okay, so in a case such as this, um, and your first couple of lines says he doesn't accept his problem or want help, um, in itself shows that there is no readiness for uh, any kind of support or help at all. So you would consider a person like this unfit for counseling and uh, if we do find that there there are people who come in uh, and if when you determine the the circumstances and you determine that they have come in there by force or because uh, you know and usually this is seen in in a hospital setting they've come in there because of some kind of a, a physical issue or you know they've been um, sent by by uh, by the police or by by a legal um, warrant to take help, you would find that uh, you know there isn't going to be much of a uh, willingness to take help because they're there for an external reason. So in a case like this, you wouldn't even you know really progress with counselling because you do see that there is a lack of motivation. Uh, there is uh, there isn't a place where they are willing to even look at there is a denial of the problem so if there's a denial of the problem and they say there is no problem then what are you going to help with so in a case like this you wouldn't refer or you wouldn't suggest that they come in for counseling you would say that you sense that um, they aren't ready to to really look uh, in depth into their struggle or into their problem so if this is the case one wouldn't uh, take them on for counseling in itself. Uh, Beth, I hope I answered that. Because you'd okay. If it's the alcoholic spouse you're, you're uh, who's looking for help, you're dealing with her, and not with the with the uh, with the uh, with the alcoholic itself. You're dealing with the spouse. So there it is. Uh, what what is it how do you personalize it personalize it is is to i think we spoke about this earlier that even if you're not the source of the problem and somebody else is the source of the problem what are you going to do to manage this issue on your own so you're making it how is it that you're contributing in the problem by staying in it, right? So that's the issue over here, that, that uh, there is maybe, uh, you know, uh, so some, some of this, since you're talking about alcoholic uh, issues, there is this thing called as enabling, where spouses or family members enable the behavior, enable the alcoholic's behavior by, uh, you know, uh, d not disclosing the kind of issues that they're going through or providing for them or, uh, you know, giving them money to drink so that uh, they don't make a scene outside of the house. So all of this is called an enabling behavior. So that you would focus on. How are they contributing in maintaining the alcoholism in the spouse? How are they contributing it? So then that's where you bring about change for the, for the spouse over here. Okay. Beth? Does that help? Uh, yeah. So I was just thinking, if if the spouse has sort of is not enabling and has done everything they can, but the situation is not changing, hmm. is there? Uh, but the um, alcoholic isn't violent. Is there any situation where you would maybe even counsel? say, the wife from leaving the situation? So what you would look for, even if, she, when you're saying they aren't enabling, um, in a passive way she is enabling. Uh, how is the, how is money coming home? How is the family being fed? You know, where is he getting money from for the alcohol? All if, the, could be... if, the, if the alcoholic is the 
breadwinner and he's controlling the money and maybe just giving her whatever is left over or not left over as might right. be the case. Then, and she's struggling to maintain the house because he's not providing enough. Mm -hmm. So that's where in this in these hard situations, but these are definitely hard situations. And this is where, um, you know, of course, you've got to be extremely careful about not giving undue suggestions. You know, why don't you leave the home? Right. But then it's something that you help them see. OK, you feel frustrated because whatever you're doing, nothing seems to seem to help and you really want to work something out what are your specific options so you're getting her to take onus about the fact that maybe there are she may need to look outside she may need to get the help of family she may need to expose uh, his uh, his alcoholism to to uh, to some somebody outside or to you know to take a call for herself about about giving some kind of ultimatums now these are all things only she can do you know so that's what you're moving her into empowering her to make that change for herself so that because all of this time her inaction is maintaining the problem so when you personalize it you are encouraging her to take some action so that there is movement in some direction the more that she stays inactive, the more that the problem is going to be, uh, is going to breed. So when it's only when she personalizes it is that she comes to a place of taking on further action into changing it at some course, you know, moving it from the place, from the status quo to either the next level, right? Um, and it may actually get worse, but then there is a movement that's happening that uh, that work that's that's helping her to enlist maybe support from others or enlisting legal help or you know choosing to uh, to give him an ultimatum saying that you know unless and until something works out i'm not uh, you know I, I won't be there but it all really depends on the situation of of the uh, of of this individual you know what if she doesn't have any other support system so there may be just uh, you know minimal support that she has but empowering her to use that and that's what you would do to help them see whatever resources they have to help them move the situation from a to b you know and it is it's a step by step it's not that everything will change in one day but maybe it's the first step to probably uh, involve the neighbors the next step is maybe involve the family the third step is to involve the police or the fourth step is something else so it it goes step by step but that happens only when you help them to take agency, to take onus of that, of the, of the issue. Beth, I hope that addresses it at some level. Okay. All right. So let's move on to the next skill. And we were, we were looking into um, the next skill, which is, uh, I'm just going to, just a minute. Okay, the next skill that we're going to look into is um, the skill of influencing. Uh, how do you influence um, the counselee to into moving into um, you know moving into a different perspective or or now now certain. Okay, so what are influencing skills? It's it's an approach that one that the counselor would uh, would focus on directly. And if you look at the word uh, influence, it means um, to flow in. It is the act of um, producing something. It is a it is it is ensuring that you're producing an effect without too much of a with without too much of a force or without without really directly imposing something or without uh, an uh, a, a strong uh, command or an exercise of command now it's a skill where you are where the counselor takes to bring about a proactive step towards change so for example when they are not in a place of of uh, moving from from 
where the situation is to where the situation should be uh, you know just being able to just just talking about the situation you want you would like to, like them to move on from one place into another is where you would use those influencing skills it is to influence is to to the act it is a it is a way of producing uh, some a different effect a positive effect without a um, without really exerting too much of, of a force okay and this helps when uh, a counselee is looking for or um, the counselor would want the counselee to move into certain action that can bring about some change okay which could be permanent so you would like them to move from one level into another rather than staying on at the problem area but moving them into a place of focusing into how to bring about a solution so the purpose of uh, of influencing skills is to bring about change in the way the counselee may think or act so it's about adding a fresh perspective and hope so maybe it's it's bringing about thoughts and ideas and perspectives which may not which wouldn't have uh, which the counselee may not know about so this could be certain certain giving of certain information helping them to understand certain consequences and we're going to be looking into that what are what are some of the common influencing skills that are used in counseling so it is to bring about change in the way uh, in in the situation or the way that the counselee is seeing the situation to where that they they would like to go it's about adding new perspectives about the about the problem it this is generally used when the counselor counselee is exploring alternative ways of thinking or behavior how else what else should i do to handle my problem what are the you know the next few steps what else can i do so you you're, you're there as an influence to help them to think larger to uh, to uh, to find out strategies that could work in a situation like that so that's what it influencing is you are um coming to a step of pushing them forward into the next phase of action okay so we're going to look at a couple of uh, influencing skills and with certain examples so that uh, you know you you and and this is specifically used um at a time when you are getting them to move into the next point of action okay so the first one is confrontation now the skill of confrontation is is a very important counseling skill and as with all other um, uh, counseling skills there is a right way of doing it and there is a wrong way of doing it so here it's helping the counselee face themselves realistically especially as they interact with their with the problem or with other people so it is it's a very direct technique so often you'd see that counselees um, bring about their stories with uh, with often with a lot of contradictions okay contradictions um, uh, often you how you would see those contradic contradictions is there is a stated thought and feeling okay they they say something but they're thinking about something i mean they they're thinking about something and they're expressing a feeling in a in a very different way there are contra contradictions between feeling and behavior so they may be feeling a certain way but they may be behaving exactly the opposite and these combinations are always you know there can be huge number of uh, uh, permutations and combinations to this now sometimes to complicate things further counselees they have ambiguous feelings that is that is they they can feel two opposite feelings simultaneously and they are usually quite unaware of this uh, that they are doing this and in order to help the counselee address the distress that they are going through it is essential that uh, some of these discrepancies or these inconsistencies are brought to their attention and address otherwise you know it can make them feel very stuck in their situation so how do we do this um uh, when you do this and like i said you know there is a wrong way and a right way of doing this especially when you confront them um you know when when we do confronting in a in a very direct kind of a manner it can bring them to be extremely defensive because you know counselees need to remember that uh, uh you know they begin to see you as a counselor often in a 
one up position as if you're the expert in this and and that you're holding the greatest power in this so then if if the counselor is not careful in how you confront the counselee the the counselee may feel extremely negative may feel negative and they feel judged they may feel put down and uh, they may feel that it's it's things may get worse than what or than how it started but a good way of um, confrontation is to be gentle to be supportive and something that truly reflects what the counselor uh, what the counselee is sharing with you so the idea basically behind this is to help the counselee explore the conflict more deeply whatever conflict that they are expressing or feeling it is to help them see it more deeply with the goal of formulating a new idea or a new plan that is going to benefit them so when you are when as a counselor you are confronting you are actually expressing your genuine confusion to the counselee okay so that you are you are in a place to uh, fully understand what is happening so when you frame it that way the counselee is a lot more amenable to that understanding so it's a direct technique where there's open and honest clarification of maybe patterns that you see in the counselee and this challenges the counselee to look at that conflict and also reconcile the conflict so i'll give you a quick example uh, so uh, you know in one of the sessions that i had the the client uh, the the counselee is uh, is into abusing alcohol and the the theme the thing that he kept saying is you know i know that there needs to be a change um but uh, uh yeah i know that there needs to be a change but i i don't seem to know what to do okay and through the session there were other things that he kept stating you know i i know that uh, i am only functioning on 20% of my capacity to change my thing but 80% is something that i don't have i don't i uh, i i don't have the motivation and the will to do that okay so this seemed to be like a common thread okay i know but i don't have the motivation so, so so something that we brought up through through counseling something that i pointed out to him and said you know i'm i'm kind of sensing that there is um that uh, the will or the motivation to do uh, to do something different has become like an escape route for you do you think uh, that resounds with you and you know what what happened is he he took a he took a seat back and he he just said uh yeah i and he it, the fact is that he 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 thought about that and said that every sentence he was making came back to the fact that i know but i'm not motivated enough so it was almost like something that he was hiding behind and uh, uh, the the will yeah this is what he said the will to do it you know the determination to do it so we were talking and as we were going through the session we were talking about determination or or the will to do it and maybe just doing something that you know is right okay the will and the the need to do it the just the fact that there is a right way of doing it and all of his actions were behind the will i don't have the will okay but he was able to say that there are some things that you just need to force yourself to do so that the, the, this was a, a huge contradiction and that's what we brought up in in the session that there is, you don't have the will but you're saying that there are certain things that need to be forced and you can do that so when he began to see that uh, you know when when that was confronted he began to say yeah i see that i see that i've been hiding behind this unable to determine to be determined to do that but maybe there are certain things i must just force myself to do and probably it will change okay so that's what that's what we we mean by confrontation so let me bring about an example that will probably help okay so the example here is the counselee saying i just don't have time to exercise and i don't have the money to join a gym anyway but i really want to lose weight and feel better okay so what do you see here um there is a there is a want 
okay or there is a there is a huge need but an unwillingness i just don't have time to exercise and i don't have the money to join a gym anyway so here the counselor there are two ways of responding one is a wrong way saying you're just making excuses then you know what's good for you and you refuse to do it okay this is accurate but it is not properly framed so rather a way of saying it is on one hand you know exercise is good for you but yet on the other hand you don't want to do it could you explain this to me okay so uh, here again you're not looking as the the expert saying hey i know all your answers but you're saying this is the dis discrepancy that i see and is this something that you can think about or is this something that you can flesh out for me can you explain it to me so then you're helping them seeing yeah yeah you know I, I i see that that there is a motivation there's a lack of motivation and and not that i really can't do something right so that really helps to build up um uh, to when you confront it it helps them to understand what they may be battling or what they may be dealing with so that's confrontation that's the first one the next one is another influencing skill is what we call this focusing in focusing what uh, uh, what happens what what you're doing is it is enabling the counselee the counselor to direct a counselee's conversation into another area so whereas you uh, by by doing that you're helping them generate a new perspective towards their story like for example you may notice that a counselee is mentioning very little about some area of his life and uh, the counselor may be believing that there is something uh, which he's missing out definitely has a direct correlation to the story that they're talking about so you are attempting to defocus or direct their focus in another area which you may see is directly impacting the way that uh, the situation is okay so we'll, we'll look at an example again um, uh, the client the counselor is saying i'm wondering how i will manage my finance uh, many bills to be paid kids tuition fees house maintenance and much more okay so the counselor responds you are worried about the many responsibilities you have financially so the client says yes absolutely and the counselor is saying often so here they're influencing they're helping to defocus to change the focus often the amount and the way we spend our money can give us a good idea on how we can manage our finances what are the other things you like to spend on okay so here uh, feeling that maybe through the conversation that the counselee does not have a good hold over money, um, the counsellor is attempting to focus on on other things. So, so this uh, counselee has just mentioned a few things that seem um, obvious, but other things are not being focused on and this is what the counselee would like to do you know uh, what is another way that you spend your finances and maybe that's a good way good place to start and so it's a it's a very gentle refocus on talking about something that you feel may have a contribution to the problem that the person may be going through so that's focusing okay now i'm i'm going through very quickly with this because uh, uh, you know this these things are used uh, you know why especially in the phases of um, of your of understanding right the phase of self understanding this is where it is used and um, you know it these things help to bring about uh, a, a consolidated way for the counselee to understand the problem as well as to work through what may be actually causing these difficulties okay the third one is interpretation or reframing now this is uh, again a common skill that is used in counseling the um, objective here is to help them build another perspective towards the problem so that they can take action okay so you're you're changing maybe a negative frame of reference that you are seeing and through this you're encouraging them to 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 perceive 
whatever their experience is in a different fashion, in a different light. Um, like, for example, let's say a counselee who is uh, uh, upset about having to move away from the home uh, is you know, is likely focusing on the loss of her support network and the familiarity of the count of of the of the place that she's in. So, what is the counselor doing here? Um, the counselor may say, while acknowledging that you know it's a huge loss, they could reframe that event to a to a, to a better position. So, let me bring about that example. I think it'll it'll help to understand. Okay, okay. So, the the counselor is saying, moving away from home has made me miserable. I miss my family, my friends, and everything that was so familiar. So the counselor says, uh, you feel unhappy that you have left behind all your loved ones and everything that was familiar through this. Uh, what good do you see through this, um, although? So the counselor says, uh, I don't know. Everything is so new. And here the counselor, say, counselor says, being in new situations can be quite stressful, isn't it? However, it's an opportunity to experience new people and places too. What do you think? Right. So here, when the counselor is probably at a loss, you're bringing up a, a thought or a, or a different frame of reference. Maybe it's your own frame of reference, but you're bringing it here and uh, looking for ways for the counselor to to look at it differently. So you're saying maybe it's an opportunity to experience new people. Or you could say, you know, people often in new situations do uh, do find other opportunities to, to meet new people and places. How does that sound to you? Or uh, what, what do you think about um, those kind of uh, ideas and thoughts? So you are helping to interpret or helping it to reframe it in a different way so that they're able to look at the situation a little bit more positively. You are helping them to engage in a more positive fashion in their in their situation. OK, so that's the third one that is about interpretation or reframing. The fourth one is logical consequences. And this is something we all use on a regular basis. This helps the counselee to look at positive, possible outcomes. What are the pros and what are the cons of a certain situation? You're looking at positive possibilities. You're looking at negative possibilities and trying to concentrate on something that is more positive. So you're looking at logically. If I were to do this, what would be the good ways? What would be the bad ways, right? And, and that's something rather than you doing it, you know, um, and I remember in, in last week's um, certain role plays, it, uh, more than us saying, hey, you know, if you do this, this will happen, this will happen, this will happen. But if you do this, this and this, you needn't do that. You are actually helping them to to come up with a with with certain consequences. So let's look at um, look at uh, an example. Um, the counselor says, what are your expectations regarding the medication that is given to you for depression? So probably in, in this, the client, the counselee has depression and is looking at medication. So the, uh, the counselee is saying, I guess with the medication, I should feel better in a few days and have them taken off. Okay. So the counselor gives in, uh, um, you know, some kind of a uh, um, knowledge base here. Actually, the first few weeks, you may really not experience much change. It may take a month or more to see the real effects of the medicine. So the counselee says, yeah, oh, that's disappointing. Um, you really wish it would work quick. However, it would be necessary to keep a constant follow up. So what you're doing here is helping them look at the consequence of something that they have decided on. So here the counselee says, I may take the medication off, right? And here you're giving them a knowledge base and saying it may take a month, OK? And you and the last sentence, you're actually responding to the disappointment of, of the counselee. But you're saying it would be necessary to keep a constant follow up, OK? So in this way, you're helping them to take a right course of action through the through the skill that you you're um, through the, through the skill that you are attempting to build through this. OK, so that's logical consequences. The next one is what we call as sorry, self-disclosure. OK, self-disclosure is where your um, the counselor discloses personal information which may be relevant or supportive 
to the counselee's decision making process. So you may be giving in something from your own life or some personal information that is relevant for them making a decision. And this is used often as a motivational factor to uh, help them work through a situation. Okay. And also, again, it is something that creates trust and rapport in the relationship. So let's just look at an example. OK, the counselor is saying, I know how hard it is to be consistent about disciplining children. I struggled with correcting the behavior of my children, too, for a while, a few years ago. Often it just feels like it's more work and effort. But at the end, I have seen that it has paid off being consistent. Uh, so the, uh, the counselor says, oh, I can't imagine you having problems managing your, your children. So the counselor says, I'll take that as a compliment, but it's been a learning experience for me too, right? So when there may be times that, and there are times that you can self-disclose, but again, it should be minimal. And that's where I want to go back to this, this uh, uh, appropriate use. How do you use it appropriately? It's being intentional. It's being simple and not being very complex. It shouldn't be about you telling your story. It's being parallel to what the person's saying, not lying, to be able to time it correctly and not disclose too much by doing it, uh, uh, yeah, by doing it too much or by doing it too frequently. All right. So being careful about the way that you use this thing of self-disclosure. Because and often I see that especially you know in a pastoral setting, this works, uh, it works wonderfully when you're able to share uh, in simple terms certain struggles that you see see that's happening that it encourages them to work on something themselves also okay uh, the next one is feedback this involves giving information this is just information about what will uh, which the, which a counselee can use as a reference for improvement. So this is concentrating specifically on good things of the of the counselee and helping to explore certain possibilities so that they could get better. So it's it's a feedback mechanism of what you see that the counselee has been working on. So let's look at an example. The counselor says, I'm wondering if you have noticed that each time we have discussed the children, your eyes have filled up. Would you explain to me what you're going through? OK, so that's a feedback. OK, that's a, that's maybe like a like a feedback to to get about an exam to get about a talking about something or another example is, is over the past few sessions, you seem to have made efforts to stick to your schedule. You have prepared the progress you are seeing could be related to that. That's a job well done. So you're actually just giving either a positive feedback or a feedback to bring about some form of a change or some for, form of a movement into the next way forward. So giving that is also influencing them to stay the course and stay the, stay the action. OK, and last one is providing information and suggestions. And this is something that we also do where you are creating new possibilities or bringing about new alternatives or inspiring them to approach certain problems in a new way. So this is how you would give certain suggestions. Uh, an example, um, I have the counselee says, I've been wanting to know all the investment plans available in a bank, but I'm afraid I really don't understand some of these terms. So here's a suggestion. Yes, with all the jargons, it can be a bit unfamiliar. A good person to approach to find out about these financial plans is a bank manager. So you are giving specific information. Or it could be certain information about a condition that they may be going through, maybe some kind of a mental health condition that they may be going through that they require information. So as much as you can, you are you should it's called an education right so you 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 do give them the details or factual details of something and then try to understand how much what they can take with the kind of information uh, that they've been given how they can move that forward with the information that's uh, that's given okay um yeah is there any 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 questions here 
Penny, I, I know this is this is a real run through, a really fast run through. Um, uh, maybe I think what we could probably do is let me give you all. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Let's let's try and work one out. Okay. Uh, so the the council is saying, I know I generally feel better after the medical procedure, but visiting a doctor is so frightening. Those needles, the smell, and the entire environment can be very daunting. Would anybody like to like to try and um, and uh, what, what uh, any of this? You can use an interpretation or a reframing or even a logical consequence. Anyone would like to try? You could do a logical consequence. That probably would be the easier one to do. How would you reframe uh, this for the counselee? Anyone? Nobody? OK, let, let me help you all with this. So the, the first thing that you could first is, you know, uh, respond and say, um, you know, this must be extremely daunting for you every week coming in to meet with the doctor, um, with the needles, with the smell, with the envi entire environment can be very discouraging because you're doing this week after week, isn't it? OK, so you've responded. And now you're getting into a probably an interpretation or a reframing and saying something like, um, uh, you know, uh, once you've you've had this, once you've uh, had this medical procedure, um, how do, how do you feel? How do you feel physically? OK, so this is it's only come through a question. OK, and so they may say, yeah, I feel actually I feel a lot better for the next two weeks. I, I feel a lot more energy. I feel much more stronger. So then. So then maybe you respond by saying, um, so sometimes going through this can be daunting, but uh, but for the two weeks, it may be worth it. Don't you think so? You know, so you've interpreted it differently by helping them see that there is a there is maybe something good that comes out of this. OK, or in logical consequence, very similarly, you could say, yeah, as uh, as much as this may be very difficult for you, um, what how do you think what what are the implications of this procedure for you? Right. So you're helping them to logically find out, OK, yes, there are negative consequences, but maybe the positive ones are a lot more, much more uh, stronger. OK, so that's how you tend to reframe. OK, uh, I think someone had asked a question. Someone had put up their hands. Uh, so that was me. Yes, Samir. Um, one was uh, these uh, influencing skills that you have listed. They're they're not uh, listed in uh, in order of priority. Like we first go with confrontation and then focus. So any 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 influencing skill that seems fit. Uh, yes. It's a tool that the counselor could use. Uses, yeah. There are many. You can yeah. use whatever is relevant to your discussion. You don't. You don't use all of them. Right. It's only what is relevant for your discussion. Right. Um, so along those lines, Pastor, I was thinking. You know, uh, um, like it, like some of them kind of speaks to a, a counselor's personality type like for example um I, i'm assuming just for me i'm more drawn towards uh, logical consequences to kind of naturally take that up and and mm -hmm. approach any situation with a logical point of view and and jump to that so that so you know so that uh, or um, i know my wife if she were to become a counselor she she almost like all the time does a self-disclosure like she she puts herself like oh even i had this the same thing mm. so so I'm, I'm wondering if uh, there's uh, any danger in that i i want to say like you know probably leaning on one skill too much might be a disadvantage but i don't so that that's uh, like an open and like 
your thoughts kind of thing like do you use all of it like or do you consciously choose like what does just come naturally so that was uh, yeah that was uh, something but uh, the other bigger question also i think is um, you know uh, in the beginning somewhere we had uh, so one of the points that that has stayed with me is this journey um, there's the 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 self determination like you know the counts what 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 we're helping is uh, the counseling like the 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 solution is self determined and that works best however this influencing skills seems a little uh, counter productive to that it, it's, it's directed almost, it's yeah, directed it, yeah it's it's almost like yeah so it's it's not self determination it's like you know we are borderline offering solution to the counselees so i was struggling with those uh, that that concept a little bit as well okay so you use so, so if you look at this entire list uh, they 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 can be used in different situations like in confrontation you use it when you are seeing a discrepancy between uh between uh what they're saying or what they're doing yeah what they're saying what they're doing what they're behaving what they're feeling you see that and and that's what you want to call out because you probably feel that there is something that is not being addressed that seems to be hidden so that's that's when you use something like that um uh, interpretation is when your counselee is able to see it only in a specific perspective and nothing else and they stuck in that and you want them to look at something so often you will have and very often you will have counselees coming and say i don't know how to look at it differently so when you are you are giving a uh, it's like it's like giving them a smell of meat okay when you smell meat and you say okay that that smells nice maybe i should try and taste it that's what you're doing and uh and this isn't just probably in one maybe not just in one perspective but that's what you move in to help them to look at different perspectives so yes you're right that it comes from the counselor but what you're doing here it is um it is brought about in such a way that it although it is a directive approach it's not an approach that imposes you have bought about an idea and you're asking them to probably think about what it me- would mean for them so even when something like that comes about you still you're still giving the last word to the counselee you may need to help to show them a different perspective by bringing about you know the smell of that meat but they're the ones who who would eventually need to chew it and eat it and digest it okay but yes you are you are going to be doing that um or let's say the last one that we looked about was uh, uh the last one was uh, the feedback the last one was uh, the providing broad. information and broad suggestions okay now for for someone uh, who is absolutely no uh, like last week i had someone who had uh, um who went through uh, psychosis or schizophrenia okay so she she's she's had a huge she has had an episode of it and um uh, she had no clue as to what the entire episode was so something that and uh, there were there were questions that were framed as to you know what will happen will i will 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 i get this again uh, what is going on wrong with me so there has not been any information that was shared by her psychiatrist so the suggestion that was made was you know you seem to be really lost about what this is going what what is going about um have you ever uh, have you have you brought this up as a discussion with your counselor so you are giving a broad uh, suggestion because it may be needed for her to understand a lot more about her condition okay so you are giving her the the responsibility to actually go do that on herself and figure that out so she came back saying yes the doctor did tell me about this this and this so then we started on say okay what does that make you feel where where do you think you are at with the kind of diagnosis that you've had so sometimes it may be important to be a bit more directive so that 
they have a place to go or they know how they have to go or let's say if there is a, a woman who ha who's being uh, there is there's violence at home okay there is uh, there is physical abuse that's going going on um it it is it is to understand that there is a struggle that's there and what are the alternatives that she's used so she said yes i've i've probably walked out of the home i've called the neighbors um uh, you know i've sat and gotten the beating so you're also helping them you're and the influencing skill is to say um what what are the other places that that uh, people have suggested to you what have others suggested to you that you should do so there you're giving a direction say okay maybe my my mother told me that i should probably go to the police and give in a complaint okay what does that make you feel so there may be certain things that you know whatever is in your understanding or your ability to assess the situation to give relevant information to provide those broad suggestion so that they could take that take that on and again this is this is very relevant to the needs of the counselee it's not um uh, it's not something that you will force it down and you're also looking at whether they will be receptive if they are not receptive then you know you can you can you step back you step back and say you know that that's fine if if that information is something that you wouldn't want to try and there are many times counselees may come back and saying that you know i don't want to you know that that's something i i i've thought about but i don't want to do and say oh great you know that that's that's a good thing that you you've, you've uh, actually thought about it but would would like to try something else but nevertheless it is important to bring up that uh, uh, that that sense of a uh, information is definitely something that you may need to give okay uh i hope i answer that okay yeah. we're at 1150 and uh, i know uh, christopher there is there is a question here um, you know i had a smaller part to finish which i will probably take on in the next session which is just the last one is of initiating action which we will uh, do in the next week um, and uh, christopher we will i will come back with certain confrontation scenarios also uh, next week as well okay um, so shall we close may i just request any anybody to just close with a word of prayer okay all then, right I'll pray. yes go ahead go ahead harrison yes please please all right our oh, heavenly father we thank you and we bless your name we give you all the glory we give you all the honor we give you all the adoration we give you all the praise for a time like this we thank you for the word of knowledge we thank you for the word of wisdom we thank you oh god that you give it understanding and you give it to us and you give it to us completely we want to thank you, God, for the vessel that you are using, O oh God, to impact this knowledge on us. And we thank you, O oh God, for the hearers. We thank you, O oh God, that the words we hear, O oh God, shall not just drop void. But, Father, we shall take up this word, if God, and bring impact into your kingdom. We are asking, Holy Spirit, that you will direct us. You will give us the enablement, the grace to do exceedingly above all we can ever imagine. We thank you, O God, that when next ago we gather here, we will have a lot of share, and all to the glory of your name. We thank you, Father, even as we depart from here, give us the grace, O God, to take up, O God, this word of knowledge and bring growth to an impact into your kingdom. For this I pray to Christ the Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Harrison. Thank you, everybody. Amen. God bless. Amen. We meet you next week. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, everyone.